Okay, so in the last video, uh, we talked about uh, describing sets using the listing method, where we literally take the elements in a set and just list them out. So sometimes that might be kind of difficult or tedious or even impossible if we have too many elements to list. Um, so uh, in that case, uh, one of the options is to use what's called the set builder. So there's a notion of a set builder uh, notation here. So set builder notation. Or the set builder method. Okay, so either the set builder method or the set builder notation, whatever you want to call it. Um, but anyway, this kind of has two parts to it, um, set builder notation. So what we're going to do is, uh, let's start with an example. It's usually the best way to do it. So example one. Um, so let's uh, remember example two from the previous video. Uh, we had two, four, six, and eight. So let's, uh, let's take this set. So remember, this is the listing method, right? We literally listed out all the elements here. And let's... Um, just describe this using set builder notation. Okay, so this is going to be uh, exactly the same. So this equals, so remember equality of sets if they have exactly the same elements. So here's how we do set builder notation. Uh, still open with the curly brace. Start with the variable name. Okay, uh, X is typical, we usually like to use X. Uh, put a big old vertical bar in there. Um, you know, don't make it short enough to confuse with a one, but don't make it too long either. It, it's you don't really have to be too picky about it. Just make sure it's uh, make sure it's long enough so that you don't confuse it with the number one. But anyway, x uh, such that okay, this uh, is read such that. Um, then what we say is x is a positive uh, even number. Then we can say uh, less than ten. So there are actually a few different ways of describing this. Okay, but before we talk about that, let's talk about what uh, what's going on here. Okay, so uh, here, this example one, two, four, six, eight. So if we want to describe that using set builder, um, we do this here. So set builder notation, no matter what kind of set you're describing, you always have two parts. So here's your variable, okay, the variable name. Okay, where this just kind of represents any element in the set. And then what we have here is our uh, defining property. So this here is our defining property. Okay, defining property. Okay, um, so here x such that, remember this is read such that, so we can call that, uh, let's move up a little bit. So this is a such that. Okay, so uh, the set 2, 4, 6, 8, we can also describe that as uh, the set of all x such that x is a positive even number less than 10. Okay, so just forget about this. Think about um, what are all the positive even numbers that are less than 10? Well, uh, 0 is even, right? But it's not positive. Okay, so 0 is not a positive number. Um, so we can forget about that one. Uh, 2, and also anything less than 0 is not positive either, right? Those are all negative numbers. So uh, 2 is the first positive even number. Okay, so it's uh, 2, and then uh, if we keep going, 4 is the next positive even number, 6 is the next one, 8 is the next one, and then 10, but 10 is not less than 10. Okay, so if we say x is a positive even number less than 10, the only numbers we have are 2, 4, 6, and 8. Okay, these are all the positive even numbers less than 10, and we see that's identical to the set over here, right? So, um, now again, when we do set builder notation, we always have a variable Okay, and we can call it x, we can call it y, z, t, w, it doesn't matter what we call it. Um, so we can call it x, uh, just want to make a point here. So we can get rid of this, uh, we can call it y. Okay, y is such that y is a positive even number less than 10. Okay, that doesn't change anything, right? It does not change anything at all, no matter what we call that. So remember, when we listed out 2, 4, 6, 8, um, we didn't use the fact that we used x over here, right? It's just a variable name, so we can call it like a dummy variable name. That's usually what you call it. Uh, it's just a dummy variable because it doesn't matter what we call it. So we can call it x, we can call it y, we can call it z, we can call it t, w, a, b, c, and so on and so forth. We can call it smiley face, creepy smiley face. Um, but that's, you know, don't do that. Um, for, as far as variable names go, it's good just to stick to letters of the alphabet. But the point I want to make here is it does not matter what we call the variable. Just, you know, use something uh, that makes sense, like don't use a smiley face, but the point I want to make is you, you can do that, it's just, I wouldn't. Um, it's just more common to do uh, letters like X, Y, Z, T, W, things like that. So anyway, um, and this here is called the defining property. So this property here defines 
uh, every number in the set. Okay, so if you're thinking about this example here, um, yeah, set builder notation is kind of overkill, is a little bit too much. Uh, listing out 2, 4, 6, 8 is definitely easier, shorter than doing this, right? Um, saying x is a positive even number less than 10, okay? But let's, um, what if we wanted to list out all the positive even numbers less than 100, okay? So let's uh, change this example just real quick. Uh, so if we wanted to list out all the positive even numbers less than 100, then um, first of all, let's change this to example two. Okay, so example two, and we'll get rid of this. Okay, so what if we want to say x such that x is a positive even number less than 100? Okay. Well, it's still, it's set builder notation, right? So we still have our variable. Uh, we're just calling it x, though we can call it whatever we want. But we have x such that uh, x is a positive even number less than 100. Okay, so before when we had less than 10, we had 2, 4, 6, and 8. But now what do we have? Um, well, this is quite a bit more, right? Uh, it's going to be, I'm not going to list all of them, but it's going to be, so remember, uh, curly brace for listing method and for set builder notation. So it's uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, right? And there's just, there's too many of them to list out, right? I mean, we can list all of them out. It's going to take out too much space, too much time. So in that cases like that, set builder notation really is better. Okay, but what if we wanted to keep going like this? Well, one way we could do that is uh, use these uh, ellipses here. So three dots, comma, and then we could say uh, 96, 98. Okay. And then close with a curly brace, maybe make it a little prettier. Well, that wasn't terrible, I guess. I've done a lot worse, but anyway. Um, so uh, this is sort of another concept here. What's this here? So these three dots, what they mean is uh, continue the pattern. Okay, so these three dots mean uh, continue, continue the pattern. Okay, that's, that's what these uh, dots here mean. So continue what pattern? Uh, the pattern you establish with these numbers here. Okay, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. If you look at that pattern here, it looks like we're listing on even numbers, right? So if you forget about all this, you say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Oh, I bet the next number is 14, then 16, 18, 20, and so on. Okay, so that's really what this means. So the dot, dot, dot means continue this pattern, and then eventually you'll get to 96, and then 98. And 98 is the last one in the set uh, if we list in increasing order. Because um, remember, the order doesn't matter, right? We can list them in any order we want. But it's, you know, it's common, I guess, to list in uh, increasing order like this. But again, the order doesn't matter. But anyway, um, if we continue this pattern, listing them increasing like this, then eventually we'll get to 96 and then 98. And 98 will be the end uh, if we list it in increasing order. Because remember, x is a positive even number less than 100. Okay, so we stop at 98 because 100 is the next even number, but 100 is not less than 100. Okay, 100 equals 100. So anyway, this three dots here just mean continue the pattern. We'll talk about those again. Um, later. So this is sort of, you can use the listing method with these three dots, uh, the ellipses here, um, to sort of uh, condense the listing method so we don't have to list out every single number here. Okay, because if we list out all the positive even numbers less than 100, that's just too many. Okay. Um, you know, we don't want to list out all of those. But anyway, uh, the point here is for set builder notation, we have x such that x is a positive even number less than 100. Um, we have our variable name and then always the defining property after this such that. So one last thing to point out, um, so a lot of people use this vertical bar for such that, uh, but some people, uh, including myself, uh, we like to use a colon instead. Because the vertical bar also means something else in math, um, and there is some kind of ambiguity sometimes. Uh, it relates to division, things like that, but not really important here. But um, it's also, some people do use a colon. So whether you see it like this with a colon or with a vertical bar, it's the exact same thing. Okay, they mean exactly the same thing. So you might see both uh, in textbooks or in worksheets, things like that. So just want to point out that whether it's a big old vertical bar or a big old colon like that, um, it still just means such that. Okay, that's, uh, they're exactly the same thing. So uh, this is still read x such that x is a positive even number less than 100. Okay, so that's uh, two examples with uh, set builder notation. And also, um, so just keep in mind, vertical bar or colon like that. And we also talked about this continuing the pattern with ellipses, but we'll talk about this again uh, in a later video. So anyway, that's all about set builder notation um, and two examples there.